Tonight in Worcester, the two preseason Patriot League favorites square off. Fair to say the season hasn't totally gone as planned for either one, which makes tonight's game all the more important for Holy Cross and Lehigh. And alongside Adam Giardino, I'm AJ Cannell for the Crusaders and the Mountain Hawks this season. All the pieces are clearly in place, but Lehigh recently absorbing a four-game losing skid. They've shaken that off. They've won their last two, but Holy Cross, tons of offensive firepower, really struggling, though, in the last several games. Last couple of games, a couple of 11-point losses, and like you said, they're in the bottom half of the standings, so it's not out of reach yet. They're only three games out despite being in sixth place, so some time yet to go and some opportunities still to pick up some big wins. And one of the reasons that Lehigh has surged after recently going through some issues of their own, some surprise scores starting with Megan Walker coming off a career-high 23. And it was an explosion out of nowhere. The second most points she had had in a game in her career was 15 back in early January against Boston University. Walker not doing it from the inside, doing it from the outside, knocking down seven triples. She'll be a handful tonight for the Holy Cross Crusaders. In order for the Crusaders to get back on the winning track, they need their bigs to play well, and Megan Swords really played well last time against Lehigh. And normally when we talk about Holy Cross's bigs, you're talking about Lauren Manis averaging almost 18 points and 11 rebounds, but Swords just an absolute monster on the inside when she gets going 16 points and 16 boards against the Mountain Hawks. League standings, Holy Cross and Lehigh not very far apart. Certainly this conference is there for the taking, not necessarily in terms of the top spots, but these teams can do damage with still plenty of time left to go. I think Bucknell has shown in the league that they've been very strong, but you're right, to finish in the first couple of seeds, finish top four and get that home, home court advantage the first round, first couple rounds of the Patriot League tournament, still on the table. Really important in this league, you want to play as many games at home as possible, as you see the starters for both teams. Want to play as much as possible at home in the league tournament, it's all home sites. I heard you guys have been getting that type of luck off the opening jump. <laughs> Paul always seems to find us off the tip. Just a couple of days ago, the men were at home. Exact same thing happened. That one had a little more height. It got over the table to us. <laughs> we were safe from danger. I don't know what I would have possibly done if that ball had come over. <laughs> but it's the first possession of the game for Lehigh, and they post up Grothaus. Lauren Manis going to take it herself and give it to LaBarbera, the trailer for Holy Cross. Crusaders for much of the year were number one in the country in three-point percentage. They've dipped the last couple of games. A lot of that has to do with Avery LaBarbera, number three on the far wing, as well as Catherine Petey, the other Crusader on the far wing. Now she's open in the far corner. LaBarbera puts one up, tough shot on the first possession. Both teams come up empty. Just those players we highlighted for Holy Cross, they were shooting over 45% the first couple of months of the year. Lauren Manis with the rejection of Cameron Benz. Manis has had some huge games as well against Lehigh. We talked about Swords a few moments ago, but Manis had a season high 29, a shade off a career high with 11 rebounds as well in the earlier win this year against the Mountain Hawks as that's a missed jumper by Boer. 29 points from her, 16 from Megan Swords, which we highlighted, 45 points from the post players. Those two need to play better than they had the last couple of games. That's key for the Crusaders to get back on track. They post up Swords here, tries to turn around, lost it, got it back, ripped away again. It's a tie-up, Cameron Boer forcing the arrow to flip, but it'll stay with Holy Cross. Such great defense by Boer and the Mountain Hawks. It's a real handful for Megan Swords down there at 6-3, but they were able to reject that shot. Trying to go big to big passing, but Manis overshoots Swords. For those two, they need to be on track for this team to have success, and for most of the year they have been. For Manis, you, you know, you see that turnover, you think, okay, well, that's your power forward. Why would she possibly be dishing that out? Close to two and a half assists per game. It's really part of her game, but obviously that turnover, a bit of a force there. Long three ball from Grothaus. Good offensive rebound for Benz against Lauren Manis. Catch and shoot three. It's Walker who had the career best 23. No that time and a good job for Swords of sticking on her pivot foot. Yeah, I was just going to say, not just grabbing that rebound, but not traveling afterwards. Two minutes in, still scoreless. LaBarbera from the foul line. That 
will change. Avery LaBarbera, nearly 14 points per game this year, good for sixth in the league. Quick off the make, heads from the other way. She only averages four per game. When you talk about a 5'9 senior who starts for you, well, she's the point guard. She's certainly a, a pass first point guard over three assists per game, but a rare bucket for her. Well, decided more than two minutes in, her team had to get going mm -hmm. offensively. Someone had to put the ball in. Manis draws defenders. That's what she's so good at in addition to scoring herself. Madeline Smith couldn't capitalize. Now back to Swords, and she shuffles her feet. The philosophy defensively for Lehigh against the Holy Cross bigs, especially Manis, whereas many teams will try and double-team Manis, Lehigh will not. Careless turnover there on the Mountain Hawks end, but the philosophy Sue Troyan was talking about coming into the game that you know they want to certainly contain Manis as much as possible, but that they don't want to have other players start to go off. Right, and you know, you see a lot of the double team with, with some teams, but the way that Manis can get out and catch beyond the arc and make something happen out there, it's so hard to double her. What, are you going to throw two defenders on somebody who's standing outside the three-point arc? Well, they send someone down there, and Manis with a, a late double coming over, stumbles and falls short with that attempt. Right, picking their spots on when to double her. That was a good decision there for Lehigh. Well, Sue Troyan mentioned coming in, she did not plan to double Manis, but yeah, that's not completely true. Barbara to Manis. That's the duo, point guard and the forward that has worked so well together. Manis is at the top of the league in three-point percentage, but misses there. Cameron Boer knocks over the Holy Cross defender. Smith, offensive foul. Madeline Smith brings that type of energy and hustle for this Holy Cross team. And you'll see that she sells it. There's a little bit of that that forearm and she's off balance, but that's one of those where I think she has to go down in order to sell the call to the official. And the contact was there, that forearm was there. As a defender, if she stays on her feet, th that might not be as noticeable. You know, sticks the backward somersault landing though. The Summer Olympics coming up. <laughs> La Barbara with the head fake. Holy Cross brought Faulkner and Azema into the game. Azema misses off the bottom of the hoop, but then Nettis comes in, cleans it up for her first bucket. Even though Azema missed, what a catch by Azema just to grab that, not have it be a turnover, keep it alive on the offensive end. And then, of course, there's Manis doing what she does best. Could be some movement with Manis in both points and rebounds on the Patriot League record list in tonight's game. Talk more about that, a floater. Second one of that variety goes in from Headstrom. Both times going left, the senior from Minnesota converts. She has all four for Lehigh. Faulkner down, looking for Zemma, stolen by Walker. Megan Walker up the side to Boer, wide open at the rim. After the turnover, Faulkner got back, but never really picked Boer up in transition, and that was a great find at the offensive end for Lehigh. Three straight games with double figures coming in for Boer, leads the team in scoring and rebounding. And the explosive Avery LaBarbera. Manis thought about it, will drive, loop it down, Azema wild with the shot. Some looks down low early for Azema, just can't finish. Good double for Manis, knocking it away from Grothaus. Lead feet, there's Azema again at the rim, this time it's in. Considering where we are with the score, this has been a lot of up and down basketball. It's not as if the pace is lacking. We're just not seeing that many hoops. Everyone's been so critical so far. Not a huge surprise when you consider, I think, both teams respect each other enough that they want to advance the ball quick, take the easy opportunities when they're there, not have to defeat the other team's defense in the half court. A miss from Grothaus nearly got it back, but LaBarbera swooped in. Overdue for that first official's timeout as well. He played, I mean, yeah, this is, I don't think there's been 
a whistle except for that one substitution on the, the tie-up. There there's not been too much of a, of a dead ball no. action. LaBarbera drives the alley, tough one, and that'll go out. But then they say, I think they pointed towards Lehigh there. Thought that might have been deflected on the way up, but there's a timeout on the court. LaBarbera with the miss, 6-6 six to six in the early going. Some open looks for Azema down in the paint. Welcome back to the Heart Center with Adam Giardino again. I'm A.J. Cannell. Worcester, Massachusetts, key game between the top two teams in the preseason poll in the Patriot League. Lehigh was picked first. Holy Cross was picked second. And both teams are up there in the league standings, but not at the top. And those expectations for a couple of programs that in recent years they haven't really been the traditional favorites, Adam, within the league. Both coaches really admitted that those expectations have weighed heavy at times this season. I think the league has been so comfortable, so used to American the last few years, and then before that, the Kelsey Minato led Army Black Knights, who were uh, more than just Patriot League favorites, but they were favorites to knock out teams in the NCAA tournament as well. And, uh, you know, to, to have that changing of the guard the last couple of years, this is, for, especially for Holy Cross, such a senior led group that it's four years and well this is where it's supposed to all come together for them and I'm, and I'm sure that that expectation does rest heavy on their shoulders it really is for both teams with the seniors mm -hmm. of the 10 available 10 possible starters seven are seniors between these two teams four on the holy cross side who are off the mark for lehigh both teams off to a cold start lehigh is three for 11 holy cross three for 10. But as you said, it's been up and down. Deep position there, and Swords can't make one. I mean, Holy Cross has gotten the ball deep in the paint. But Coach McInerney and McInerney, the interim head coach for Holy Cross, did praise the length and athleticism for Lehigh. But there it did seem like there was a, a bit of a size mismatch for Megan Swords. Even though she was deep in the post, she had Cameron Boer a, a bit off balance and that's what Ann McInerney was saying to her back down the court. Hey, you had position, use your shoulders, create some more space and leverage. Freezing cold for both teams in the first quarter. Combined six of 22, that's 25%. That shot doesn't go, offensive foul anyway. First foul committed by Holy Cross, one on each side. That was Avery LaBarbera picking it up. No foul trouble to speak of. And that's really well done by Cameron Boer, who was in position, allowed LaBarbera to come down on her. Yeah, maybe there was a little bit after the, the release, but the general idea for Boer is that she was in position, ready to go for LaBarbera. You said one foul per side. There was that offensive foul that was drawn by Smith, so there have been no defensive fouls. Mm. Not like it hasn't been clean here. I mean, there's been a couple of those turnovers in the first quarter, but just the teams have not been able to make their looks. Turnover by junior Mariah Sexy as she drove into the lane. Came up a little with a little bit of a grimace on her face. Seems to be all right as she came back down the court. Trying to get swords open again. She was calling for it, said that she was. Now it's Faulkner. They want to score something off the bench. Oh. And good. No look past the wraparound for Manis. Uh, we have had seven buckets here today. That was the prettiest of them all. Excellent look by Janae Faulkner. That'll be a block there on Swords trying to guard Mariah Sexy. Swords got beaten on the up fake. Nice job on the offensive end by Sexy and looked off the defender. Drove baseline. Nothing Swords could do about it here, but nothing Lehigh could do about that one. That is beautifully done by Janae Faulkner. Lauren Manis in her career has scored 1,841 points, at least coming into the game. Could Might have a chance more. for some more here. Off and running, was going to say, you won't find two much easier than the last bucket on that replay. Those might have been even easier for her. Well, it required a little bit of speed. Don't expect someone at 6-1 to get into high gear like that and win that foot race down the court, but she certainly can. Made it look easy. Out of bounds, last touch by Manis on the miss from Franny Hottinger. Lehigh play about 12 or 13 at times. You got to keep an eye out for who's in the game with this team. 
Coach Troyan talking about their depth, saying that's something that most teams in the league don't have. They want to play at a fast pace so they can take advantage of their depth. This jumper from Clockerties. It's mostly subs in the game right now for Lehigh. In fact, I think it's all subs in the game for Lehigh. They run deep. They go really deep into this bench, 13, 14, 15 players at times. No call on the drive from Smith, finding Azema. Good bounce back after she missed her first couple. She now has four, and Holy Cross goes up by six. Mariah Sexy runs the floor, has her first two. That's such a good answer by Lehigh, especially with how frustrated they are with the no call at the other end, thinking they have drawn the offensive foul. Holy Cross gets the bucket. They don't hang their heads. They just get down court. Even on made baskets, I mean, there was that first bucket from the point guard Headstrom that came off of a make with her running. Lehigh looking to push the pace. Madeline Smith with six on the timer. Dumped down to Azema. Tough angle there. She tried to contort her body on a good look for Manis. But another great catch by Azema. That high-low really is working with her. Using her a lot in the first quarter. Clockerty, no. Time winding down, the whistle comes in for a tie-up, and Lehigh will have a chance to inbound from the baseline with 2.5 to go in the first. Cameron Boer, their top scorer, comes back in for Gina Grunhofer. Megan Eripray also into the game for Mariah Sexy. Addison Cross checks in defensively for Catherine Petey, and here comes Megan Swords as well, getting a little size in there for Janae Faulkner. The chess match going on late in the first quarter. I stand corrected, it's Swords going in for Lauren Manis. Janae Faulkner has blood on her jersey, or at least something on her uniform that they're requiring a little work over there with alcohol prep pad on her shorts. See her over there in the corner getting worked on just off the bench with her athletic trainer. Hopefully that gets sorted out. While they tended to Faulkner, that gave some time for Lehigh to bring in another sub. Hannah Headstrom also into the game. And now Holy Cross is going to send Nicole Morris into the game, maybe. Faulkner wanted to stay in, but she cannot, so Morris will come in. There's a record number of substitutions, it felt like, <laughs> when what could be for nothing, and that's, well, Holy Cross gets a nice stop out of it, I guess. That'll do it for the first quarter. Both teams began the quarter struggling a bit offensively. We know that both are capable of really piling up the points. Fast paced first quarter though, and Holy Cross leads 12 to eight at the end of the first. Earlier this season on January 22nd at Stabler Arena, there was a really cute dog there, so that was great. But other than that for Lehigh, not much to love. Holy Cross 20 to seven in the second quarter. Adam, as the second quarter begins here in the Heart Center. Yeah, as we take a look at what Holy Cross was able to do, put 20 points up, as you mentioned, AJ. Well, here in Worcester, if Holy Cross goes on some sort of run similar to that, you know, Holy Crusaders are already plus four in this game. Lehigh can't afford to fall behind by that kind of tally at halftime. Lehigh starts out in zone, and that forces an air ball miss from Swords. But Holy Cross would prefer those long two-pointers. Araprey with the miss, but the putback in deep for Walker. Holy Cross this year is first in the league in rebounding margin. That's a surprise to see an offensive rebound in second chance points. Well, for Lehigh, one of the things that they did do in that first quarter was take more shots than Holy Cross, and that's because they grabbed a couple of offensive boards, just like you described. Something that Coach McInerney, meanwhile, wants on the Holy Cross end is more production from their bench. Take some pressure off the starters. Three ball goes. Megan Walker all of a sudden heating up. Had 23 last time out. Averages just under seven on the season. Two straight buckets for her. We hadn't seen any threes go in before that. The teams had combined 0 for 7. Lehigh in front for the first time since it was 6 to 4. LaBarbera, wide open. Oh, wow, how did that one go? That fell in off the back rim. She will take it. That's quite an answer when you see the first made three at the other end against you. Floater from Walker. She's feeling it. The Holy Cross looking for more production from players like Janae Faulkner, Aluchi Azema, 
what Coach McInerney was talking about, going to them a lot early. And now Megan Swords had a number of looks down deep. She finally gets one and give the foul. Nice job by Faulkner to keep that inbounds <laughs> and then just wings it into the paint, gets a fortunate bounce. And I think Lehigh's going, how did that get through to her? And then not only that, once it's on the court, you can see the hard effort there by Hedstrom to try and go after it. I'm going to coin a new term here. I'm going to call that a Brett Favre assist. <laughs> From Zanae Faulkner. And Swords also capitalizes at the line where she's only 49% this season, but converts the and one. Azema comes back in on the Holy Cross side. Now Lehigh, again, they had a four-game losing skid, but all of a sudden they found some production from a starter in Megan Walker, a sophomore. That's a bucket and a foul for Cameron Boer. And then also off the bench for them, Mary Clockerty only averages six points per game, but she scored 43 points in the last 43 minutes of action in the last two games for Lehigh. Sort of found money from that duo for the Mountain Hawks, helped them get back on track. And you saw the foul there on Manis, her first foul of the night, took a big whack and got a piece of Boer, can be converts that three-point play. You know, the story of Mary Clockerty the last couple of games, the fact that so far she's been neutralized, that is a big story because that's a big part of what Lehigh has done offensively. Manis, assertive move, LaBarbera open, that's way too strong. Azema, good hustle that'll go to Lehigh. That first game in the run that she's had the last couple of games, Clockerty at Army scored 24 points. Again, that's 24. Mm -hmm. Six days after the terrible, tragic, horrific helicopter crash that we've all talked about, digested, that killed Kobe Bryant and nine people total. Uh, and she said after that game, Clockerty is that's a three in for Grothaus that she dedicated the 24 points to Gianna and Kobe. That was a new career high. That was the Army game. Lehigh by one, corner three. Catherine Petey, who is a sharpshooter for this team at 41%. Be a gust of wind over there from the far corner. Yeah, that's back to back threes from just about the same spot for a pair of 40% plus shooters out there that didn't even catch iron. Well, Barbara leads the team in threes made on the season. Gets the offense back in motion, five on the timer. Petey knows she has to jack it. That one was a more difficult look, but closer. Oh, great rim run. Cameron Benz, transition two. Holy Cross not set up on defense. Timeout and McInerney. Lehigh up 21 to 18. Holy Cross with a strong first quarter. Avery LaBarbera with a much needed three. Okay, she'll take it. But Lehigh up by three. Right here is why there was so much confidence in both of these teams, Adam, coming into the season. So much veteran experience on both rosters. Oh, no doubt. And for Holy Cross, obviously, Lauren Manis has been a big reason and part of their success. Cameron Benz, and, uh, or rather, Cameron Boer for Lehigh has come in, and she's answered the bell this year with 12 points and seven rebounds a game herself. She's got five points matching the team lead for Lehigh in the early going, so she's really stepped up. And boy, Lehigh as a whole, they've stepped up with an eight nothing run over the last minute 24. That's a quick 8-0. Mm. Switching up their defenses a little bit. Slowing down Holy Cross as they look to get into their offense. Crusaders still number 13 in the country in three-point percentage for much of the year. They were first. Turnover there. Quick trigger is good. Walker with her second three. She has eight. That was such a smart play by Hannah Hedstrom as she forced the turnover. She got down court. She tried to, I guess in football parlance, do the scoop and score. She tried to pick it up and go in one motion. When she couldn't, when she couldn't get that dribble off, she just stopped. And she kicked it out and hit the trailer three. 
Another look in the post that Holy Cross couldn't convert that time. Megan Swords. Moore backing her defender down. Well short, rebound Swords. Walk in three for Smith. Manis is right there. It's knocked out off of Lehigh. Ask Sue Troyan, what is it with your players like Clockerty and Walker, who most of the year were scoring a couple buckets per game, going off for 20 plus with regularity the last couple? She said, just confidence with her, really, their entire team. And felt like Lafayette, that, that win was important. And Lafayette zoned them most of the game. And she just felt like the shooters really got going, especially Walker. And Walker's working on an eight point quarter right now somebody like her gets going it, it can really be problematic for the other team you know, she, it's it's either a yes or a no from her she's either red hot or she's just somebody that becomes part of the offense and you got to look somewhere else for for a player to step up but looks like she is in the zone right now good read on that by Faulkner maybe first the call was yes it did get deflected but it turns out not a good read look and to me that's a deflection there it looked like it yeah corner three that's good Cameron Benz only her ninth three ball of the year in 31 tries and suddenly after just eight points in the first quarter Lehigh's dropped 19 points not even halfway through the second what we talk about going into the second quarter, how Holy Cross blew the doors off of Lehigh in the second quarter up at their place? This is some answer medicine for the Mountain Hawks. The road team has blown the game open both times in the second quarter. It's a 14 nothing run. And another defensive stop. Boer pushing her way through, looking for some help, just unloads it in time. Walker feeling it. Offensive rebound and the putback for Grothaus. And McInerney needs another timeout with 4.32 left to go in the half. That is some run still for Lehigh. They continue to just blow the doors off of Holy Cross. It was a five point deficit for Lehigh before they went on this run. It is a 16 nothing run over 340 for the Mountain Hawks. How good have they been, including in this run, they've knocked down four of five three-pointers. Doesn't even feel like they've missed any shots during this run. It's really both teams that makes you scratch your head because Holy Cross for most of the year had been the best three-point shooting team in the entire country. Let's we'll see a look there at Boers and one, and they started to get hot from deep. Good rim run mm -hmm. from Grothaus. And then this is the play that I love. Watch her not be able to pick it up, so she slams on the brakes and then kicks it out and drills the three rather than trying to force something inside. The Crusaders, though, just 23% from three in their last four. Lehigh most of the year has not been a good three-point shooting team, but they've made double-figure threes and shot over 40% total in their last two. Coming off a 12 for 22 effort against Army. Step back, tough one for Manis. I said, uh, Sue Troyan said she wanted to make Lauren Manis take long twos. At times, Holy Cross, Adam, you know, tell me what you, you think about the looks they have gotten because you know, they've missed some threes, they're one for eight, but they've also had a number of deep post catches in which they've missed those looks. Yeah, the offense is probably executing not too far off from where they'd like considering you're shooting just barely 30% in the game, I, I think you like the looks you're getting. And on a normal night, you're probably not one for eight. You're probably three of eight if you're the Holy Cross Crusaders, maybe four of eight, and all of a sudden that's a tie game. Even just a couple of those corner threes, that one possession from Petey and LaBarbera that were nowhere close, yet they were good looks, as that's just a lost possession as Alucci Azema had that go out of her left hand out of bounds. That's a travel. Roadhouse was thinking about the three, then thought further about it as she's only five for 21 this season from deep. Well, 
on the loss against Boston University. Manis, Swords, Izema were all well below their season averages. Need their bigs to play better, and they've just had a number of open looks. Faulkner that time missing down low again. And back the other way, Benz can't finish. And will go back to Holy Cross. The Manus, Swords, Azema trio combined for 22 points and 11 rebounds last game. They averaged 34 and 24. Holy Cross team, they're always looking to work inside out offensively. Petey, no. Manis, there. Clears out space. That's her second. Great job getting the rebound for Lauren Manis and didn't like the amount of room that she had, so she tries to create. Grabs a rebound, no trouble there. But it was that dip of the shoulder and really swing of the elbow. More than a dip of the shoulder, it was this. Yep. It was that push off with the left arm that gave the second foul and she's got to go to the bench. It's a heady play from Benz because there was a little nudge there, but Benz sold it well. Mm -hmm. Got to make sure the official sees it. Clockerty still looking to get on the scoreboard. The rest of her team has performed about as well as you could expect. They haven't heard from Clockerty, who's so hot the last couple of games. But Holy Cross has not scored in well over five minutes now. Still a 16-0 run. That'll go back to Lehigh. Not only is the offense not working in terms of executing and finishing shots, but you're having more and more turnovers now after the Holy Cross Crusaders, including an unforced turnover like that one. Lehigh team eight and two on the road this season. That theme might continue, but still plenty of time left, still in the first half. LaBarber with some numbers, Faulkner for two. Really good flip by Faulkner, who was running head of steam down court, had nice wherewithal to finish softly off the glass. Had been 0 of 3 from the field. Two right back for Grothaus. Holy Cross finally snapped a 16-0 streak. And it's right back to 11, this lead for Lehigh. What a second quarter for the Mountain Hawks. Grothaus took it away and saved it. Great job tracking it down. Lead feed, that's snatched down low. Good catch from Hottinger. Ultimately sets up what is a bad miss from deep for Grothaus. LaBarbera, no numbers, but a nice ball fake. Gets knocked down, no call. Lehigh a chance to run again. That's last touched by the Crusaders on Franny Hottinger's drive. Coach McInerney's gonna send a couple of subs in. Maddie Smith, Addison Cross, and now Shannon Murphy making just her 12th appearance of the year will come in four and a half minutes per game for Murphy. Give her a little bit of run, get Megan Swords off the court, and so if you're Lehigh, all the damage, 45 points last time out when you faced Holy Cross, Megan Swords, and Lauren Manis, you're going to get about 90 seconds without either of them on the court. And so that allows for plays like that. Clockerty, easy move inside. The Holy Cross without Manis or Swords in the game. Or LaBarber right now. I mean, that's a lot that's not out there. And that's an offensive foul on Alucci Azema. A couple of offensive fouls in quick succession for Holy Cross. And we're going to look at it here. Lowered that shoulder and the perfect timing on Benz. Uh, you know, for me, it felt like an offensive foul. The way you looked at it on replay and slowed it down, it didn't look like it was as clear of an offensive foul, but in real time, it looked like Azema created that contact, wanted to drive to the hoop, and that Benz was in good enough position to get that call for her team. There's definitely a little bit of a misconception about that you have to be in always that perfect position in order to get that call. Clockerty, all of a sudden, she's answered the call, made a couple of buckets, including the three. And that's last touch by Holy Cross. Well, pardon me, that the, the official there. Signaled that it was yeah, off of Holy Cross, but there is no way that. Carmen Porta Vial just pointed the wrong way and yeah. then quickly corrected herself. When everything's going 
Lehigh's way, Holy Cross is thinking, no, no, not this too. And McInerney made sure that they got the golf lift. LaBarbera back into the game. Could get a two for one. Faulkner able to deliver that for her team. Today, Faulkner with four. Even still, it's a 23-7 run right now for the Mountain Hawks. Left Walker open, missed that three off the high glass. That was nowhere close. Walker, though, all eight of her points that lead the game have come in this quarter. Close difference, game and shot clock. That's stolen. Crusaders can narrow the gap a little bit. Smith all of a sudden figures out she's open, rims it out. And that'll do it. That will not count, even if it went in. 36 to 24, Lehigh. Wow, Holy Cross was in the lead after the first quarter. But Lehigh went on that 16 to nothing run. They were raining in threes, really impressive out on the break for the Mountain Hawks. And they're up by 14. <laughs> Halftime in the Hart Center, getting ready for the start of the second half shortly. Holy Cross started out at them really well. We'll see Lehigh though, as they, they came, came back pretty quickly to start the second quarter. Good looks though, early for Manis and company. Yeah, Manis had six points, all of them coming in that first quarter. The Crusaders took a 12-8 lead, and then the script was totally flipped. Swords gets the bucket, the and one, and that was just about it for the scoring in that first half for Holy Cross, and it was all Lehigh. They closed the half out on an incredible run. They finished on a 23 to five run over the last eight minutes and 12 seconds. So basically that's the entire second quarter. They did it inside, they did it outside, missed their first four threes of the night. Then they were five of nine in that second quarter. Even in transition, they'll still kick it out for the trailer. Everything was going right for Lehigh in that second quarter, outscoring the Crusaders 28 to 10. If you're Holy Cross, head coach Ann McInerney, now you take a look at the at what the numbers showed up as in those free throws. Both teams were just one for one uh, in the first half, but Holy Cross now in the last game and a half, two of 23 from three. And the Crusaders normally even so good rebounding the basketball at plus five per game. Even in that category having trouble. If you're Ann McInerney and that Holy Cross bench, where do you go from here? They were picked second in the preseason poll. They have all these upperclassmen on the roster. They've lost their last two games against BU and Colgate and struggled mightily in the second quarter. Now down by 14 points. Where do you go from here? For me, if you're Holy Cross, you're one of nine from three. There's nothing you can do about that except trust that you're going to make your shots in the second half. And I think we discussed how Holy Cross was working its offense really well in that first half. The shots just weren't falling. The number that jumps out to me, the transition points, 12-4 fast break points in favor of Lehigh. That's something you can control if you're Holy Cross. Get back on defense even if you miss a bucket and make sure that the Mountain Hawks don't get, don't get easy points the other way. I think can control and need to control. That's a half court two or based on half-court offense, a two that goes in for Boer. But for the most part, it was fast break points for Lehigh. And that's the pace that Lehigh wants to play. They want to control the game, use their depth, and run. Holy Cross does not have as much as far as depth is concerned. They probably, in comparison to Lehigh, want to try and slow it down a little bit. Crusaders did not get too many calls in the first 20 minutes. So they're happy to see one with Manis getting fouled in that initial possession in the second half. Yeah, here we are, 20 minutes and change into this game, and we've had only 10 combined foul calls now. It's been evenly called both ways. Clock ticking down again, and Madeline Smith travels. Ever since Lehigh switched to zone to begin the second quarter, things have not been the same offensively for Holy Cross. No, and you could see Smith with that jab step and then tries to free herself up. If it works, it's the right idea, but you, you just got to make that move with the dribble or make that move before you actually catch the ball. Padstrom, a nice crossover. Offensive rebound on the weak side for Benz and the extra two. It's a game-high 18-point lead for the Mountain Hawks.
Avery LaBarber looks to cut into it. That pops out. The Crusaders continue to be ice cold from deep, one of 10. Those are the kind of shots when you're down 18 points in the second half, even with still a ton of time remaining. Those are ones that you need to start seeing go in. Cameron bends two more and against Manis to boot. Now even Lehigh dominating points in the paint, which is, again, the area that we talked about. Holy Cross, the team that has the two great post players. Lehigh just doing it every which way right, right now. Manis, difficult shot. Swords there, but then got knocked out of bounds. No call, just called for having her foot on the end line. Two subs quickly come in. It's Faulkner and Azema. Take a look at this. Yeah, she's saying that, hey, I got bumped by Megan Walker. She's exactly right there. That was a missed call, a little bit of a hip check on, on a player who had been beaten to the spot. Right, she had the ball. Mm -hmm. That doesn't seem quite fair that she had the ball in her arms, gets nudged out like that, more than nudged. Tried to go underneath Manis, did Grothaus, came up short. Manis takes matters into her own hands, now dishes off for Faulkner. Probably wanted to, would have been better off passing that one. But keeps her head in the play, knocked it loose. Loose ball to Grothaus, open three for Walker. Offensive rebound, Benz was close. Would have been her third straight bucket. Out of bounds to the Crusaders instead. Right there at the end of all of that bouncing ball, a lot of bodies flying every which way. There could have been a, a foul on Janae Faulkner going over the back, and Lehigh's bench is not pleased with the no call. But these officials, they've been consistent. This has been a physical game, and we haven't seen too many fouls called. That's just the way that these players have to get used to tonight going. Well, Barbara with the fake and the make. Such a good look away, and again, it, it doesn't chip away a whole lot, but turns it back to a 17-point deficit. Bends to Boer Ooh. with the answer. 10 points now for Cameron Boer. Coach Troyan says she's not a stat sheet stuffer. She's not like Lauren Manis, where she's going to go off for 30 points and 15 rebounds, have games like that all the time, but that she just does so much on both ends of the court for this team and from a leadership perspective. Last time out, just 10 points, only 10 rebounds, but a career-high eight assists. I think that's exactly what Sue Troyan's talking about. Can impact the game in different ways. The lead is at 20, and it's Lehigh ball in the heart center. Step back, Boer, that's a long two, it's no good. And Azema got fouled on the loose ball. Crusaders get a substitution into the game. Megan Swords, Catherine Petey checks in. Claire Steele comes off the bench for Lehigh is, and a Headstrom gets a breather. Well, it's a breather by necessity. Oh. That's her third personal foul. The rest of the team combined has three for Lehigh. We talked about how Manis picked up her second late in the first half. She still has the two. That's going the other way. Zama tried to follow her own shot and just ran over, over Cameron Boer. What does Holy Cross have to do against this zone to start executing? Make some shots from the outside. That will force Lehigh to adjust, but until you start doing that, you're not going to really chip away at this 20-point deficit either. Seems like it's taking away to a certain extent the dominance of a player like Manis. And the fact that she's got to be on the bench right now. Jump ball call. Yeah, Manis plays 32 minutes a game, so she has to get her rest in. Occasionally is in foul trouble as well, and that is part of it. They really, you rarely see her play, you know, 39, 40 minutes because they're usually trying to keep her out of foul trouble as much as possible with 48 seconds to go before we hit that under five media timeout window. This is as good a time as ever just to get her the breather, get her the extended commercial timeout rest as well, and then bring her back out. And not a kick ball there. They're reaching on Falker. I think the explanation that comes from Michael DeCudo is that it wasn't an intentional kick, but 
rarely see that distinction, and that, I think that qualifies as a kickball looking back at that replay. I do too, it's, and just you can see the little flick of the foot, again, intentional or not, extending your base to go out and get a piece of that basketball. That's, that's called 100% of the time. Yeah. High low against the Holy Cross zone, and it's Benz for two more. She's in double figures. And it's so well executed by Emma Grothaus. <laughs> Foul down low on Grothaus. Megan Swords, a handful down there for anybody, and Grothaus is pleading her case with the official saying, what do I do? And sometimes when you start to get this good position, it was that high forearm, I think, that got the call there up around the shoulders. Problem for Holy Cross, I mean, there's no 20-point plays. You have to just go possession by possession, not try to do too much. La Barbara, that's a very difficult shot again, and Grothaus comes down with it. And now Lehigh has some numbers again. Clockerty slices in, count it! And the foul for Mary Clockerty. Lehigh in cruise control against Holy Cross all over the Crusaders starting in that second quarter. And it's only continued into the third, a 49 to 25 advantage. Latest two come from Clockerty and she has a chance to go to the foul line. And normally this is a strength, Adam, for Holy Cross. The rebounding edge has been there all year for the Crusaders. Not so much tonight. Plus six, 30 to 24 advantage for Lehigh on the glass. And that exists on the offensive glass as well. Of the 30 boards pulled down by the Mountain Hawks, nine of them have been offensive. And from nine offensive rebounds, you get six second chance points. Just every facet here tonight, Lehigh has done a better job than Holy Cross. Do want to credit Lauren Manis as much as this game has gone awry for the Crusaders with six rebounds. Manis has passed Army's Madison Hoffman officially for third all time in Patriot League history in career rebounds, 1,093. By the time her career is done, Lauren Manis might very well be a 2,000 point, 1,000 rebound player which would be the first in program history, men's or women's. No one's ever reached those plateau numbers here in the storied history of Holy Cross men's and women's basketball. Manis grabs one more there. That's her seventh. Got some rest before the media timeout. 49-25, largest lead for the Mountain Hawks. Even got Kelly Petro in the game now to try to mix things up for Holy Cross. They get LaBarbera open, splash. That's her second three since halftime. She has 11. She's three of five for the game from distance. Just four of 10, albeit overall. Clockerty playing with some confidence off the mark. Coach McInerney says when LaBarbera gets going, it can really help the whole team play with more energy and swagger. And it's a good slicing move for Madeline Smith to get herself a trip to the free throw line. Created that contact initiated with Cameron Boer who picks up her second. I say that's in line with everything we've seen called here today. Lucia Zema checks back in for Holy Cross for Megan Sword. Azema has three fouls. We see on the opposite side, Hannah Hedstrom only, or has three fouls as well, but she's on the bench. So Lehigh doing a better job of protecting her when you've got a 20 point lead, you can protect a player when, you, when you're down 20, you gotta put Azema back out there. If Coach McInerney feels she wants Azema in the game, you're down by 20, gotta be out there. Smith, one for two at the line. The lead has been cut to 20 after a high water mark of 24. A.J. Cannell, Adam Giardino with you on Nesson for what is a key Patriot League women's basketball game. On a Wednesday evening, Holy Cross came in, picked second in the league this year in the preseason. They start four seniors plus the Phenom sophomore Avery LaBarbera.
But the Crusaders have lost their last two, three out of the last four, despite beating Boston College earlier in non-conference play. Being in line for a great season, still a chance for that to materialize, but the Crusaders have been mired in struggles as of late. That has continued tonight. And that's two more for Ben slipping in underneath. Being totally unaffected by the presence of Lauren Manis, just went right through her on the glass. The putback. Crusaders can ill afford to fall further down in the standings. They're at six and five right now in sixth entering the night. Manis has really improved her long range game. Knocks down a three, always had the ability, but this year converting with extreme consistency. First in the conference, 46%. And it's, it is consistency, it's not always volume, it's just picking the right spots to do it. Well, the pace that Lehigh plays, there's gonna be ton of, uh, plenty of possessions left to go. Manis, good footwork, just coming up short. Offensive rebound, Azema, walk up three, La Barbara. Crusader bench starting to feel it. 23 point deficit, now 16. And that's out of bounds. Lockerty couldn't keep it in. Well, Barbara, by the way, has four threes all of a sudden, including three in the quarter. She can heat it up so quickly. Larger 10-2 run right now for Holy Cross. A 6-0 run, but part of a larger 10-2 run over the last two minutes, six seconds. You fight for the offensive rebound. You kick it out. La Barbara, she followed her shot. Wasn't totally sure that it was going to go in, but bottom of the bucket. Just playing it safe, following her own look. Doesn't hurt. Lead down to 16. Manis, the face up. They've been creating tough looks for her, making life very difficult on Manis. Got to credit this Lehigh defense that is out of bounds. Could not be saved, but we just saw an example of it on that possession, just not giving Manis anything easy and Manis is sort of mumbling as she walks away after all of that I think in a different game you'd get those fouls called didn't get it there great follow there was no foul on the initial shot and she was looking for some contact on the follow-up the defender's arm straight up in the air sure there's some contact but the defenders are allowed for that Manis though all of a sudden has 10 rebounds She's a point shy of a double-double despite struggling from the field. Now 11 rebounds, and that's a foul on Cameron Boer. Her third. All of a sudden, there's some foul trouble to go around a little bit. There weren't too many fouls in the first half on either side. We saw nine first half fouls combined over the first 20 minutes, nine fouls. We've seen now 10 fouls called here in the first eight minutes of this third quarter. Now every point so important when you're coming back from a huge deficit. Do have to give Holy Cross credit. I mean, they were down 24, and now it's 15. Manis officially does have a double-double with that free throw. And that is a quick reach-in foul as Steele was losing the ball out of bounds. And that is the third on Manis. That puts Steele at the line, a pretty good free throw shooter. Man. Well, it's Adam, a whole lot. I don't know if there was anything. Steel, 14 minutes a game. We haven't said her name a whole lot, but 72.5% at the line this season. And there really didn't seem to be a whole lot there on that replay. It, it becomes a lot easier to officiate the game, and we can slow mow it down and take a look at the calls after the fact. Right, when you see maybe a, a hand resting on somebody's hip from behind, and then you see the ball pop out, you think, well, cause and effect, but not always the case. That call, though, I don't know. Steele going one for two. Love to get Faulkner going, and Holy Cross is going to see their important substitute take a trip to the free throw line. That's something that Coach McInerney, though, referring to, and I just referred to Faulkner as a sub, as you see the replay of her getting fouled with the, this time the arm coming down a bit from Grothaus. Coach McInerney saying she spoke with Faulkner and Azema about this. She, she was telling them, look, don't think of yourself, oh, I'm just a sub. I'm just a bench player. 
you're vital to this team. You need to come in and make a game-changing impact. Yeah, you're playing 26 to 30 minutes a night. Even though you're off the bench, those are very important minutes, whether they come the first five minutes of the game or the first five minutes of the third quarter. Whenever they come your way, they're critical. Hottinger gets held up, dumps it back out. Headstrom creating for Benz. Always seems to be decisive out there. Offensive rebound, Grothaus. Been remarkable the number of opportunities Lehigh has had off of offensive boards, but this time it's three in the key. Grothaus didn't know what to do once she got the ball. Totally shut down by Kelly Petro defensively where but we haven't talked a whole lot. Petro's played extended minutes here in this third quarter, was thrown in as a, a spark plug. Let's get a change of pace. She's played seven minutes this season, and she's got four minutes here in this third quarter. Just her sixth appearance of the season. It's now a 13-point game, a lot closer than it's been for a long time. Grothouse with those long strides. And another whistle. Beats Azema off the dribble, and that is number four on Oluchi Azema. Both Swords and Manis were out of the game, so it was left to Azema to protect the rim. She's going to have to take a seat now. The likelihood that you get free throws, you get the offensive possession, and not a whole lot happening at the other end. You bring Manis back in, even with her third foul, three fouls. Got to feel good for Petro, though, who just took a seat. Yeah. You get seven minutes all season, Adam, and then some important minutes as her team tries to claw back in this one. Roadhouse, who was an ESPN Top 100 recruit, Several players from Minnesota went one for two, and LaBarber starting to fill it up. Back-to-back -back bucket, she has 18, forces the turnover. Lehigh likes to get it quickly, even off the inbounds on a made basket. You'll see LaBarber make it here, and then the Mountain Hawks, even with time on their side at the end of the third quarter, they just throw it away to the near corner. bring this down to a single digits with a three-pointer before the fourth. Makes sense, certainly, though, to hold as long as they can, not give Lehigh a chance to counter. Now LaBarber will start to set the offense in motion. Manis, middle of the zone, in the corner. Madeline Smith makes it a single-digit game. Traveling violation called. Oh, my. A chance for Holy Cross to draw even closer. Sue Troyan on the Lehigh bench is saying, when will this quarter end? Or at the very least, when will this run end? It's part of a 19-4 run by Holy Cross. We saw a 16-0 run by Lehigh. That was in the first half, now a 19-4 run for the Crusaders. 2.1 seconds in the quarter. Faulkner, no, maybe that would have been slightly too much to ask for, but Holy Cross within the quarter, trailed by as many as 24. It was 49 to 25 with four and a half minutes left to go in the quarter, a 19 to four Holy Cross run, and we have a game. Fourth quarter coming up. Uh, no doubt Holy Cross was looking to build some confidence, and that's what we saw in the third quarter. And a whole lot of Avery LaBarbera coming at you. She had five first half points. She came up with 13 points in that second quarter alone, but that big three at the end by Madeline Smith has cut this to a one or a single digit game from what was once a 24 point deficit. Now it's just a nine point lead for Lehigh. Smith's got a knack for those big shots she had. The off-balance game winner against Bucknell last year. But finally, that Holy Cross run is put to an end. Cameron Boer with 12 points now for Lehigh. That was a really nice, well-composed shot where she created some space for herself in the offensive end. 
So the lead back out to 11. Again, Lehigh led by as many as 24. La Barbara going off in the third quarter, now has 18. Earlier this season, 74-57 Holy Cross in Pennsylvania. Last year, Lehigh swept the regular season series. Holy Cross leads all time in the series, 45 to 25. Through the legs of Swords, that's a turnover. That's turnover number 15 for Holy Cross compared to 13 for Lehigh. Turnover margin is a huge strength for the Mountain Hawks who force opponents to turn it over 17 and a half times per game. Good foul on Madeline Smith. Turns around and all of a sudden Cameron Boer is right in her kitchen. Hello. Swords never saw it, but still helps force the turnover. La Barbara, the drop off, Metis. Such good timing on releasing that pass just at the right moment to create the open look for Manis. Clockerty trying to answer back, cannot. Long rebound out to Faulkner. Nine point game, Faulkner with a beeline towards the paint. She's shown a bit of an act for drawing contact. We'll go back to the free throw line. Knack for drawing contact, but not the strongest free throw shooter. Shoots it in the 60s. Here today, she's one for two at the line. She has five points coming into this trip to the free throw line. She has scored between six and eight in five straight games. So that could very well continue today. I think gotta credit her for consistency. Now has six. There she is. I don't think Crusaders would mind if she exploded for Say four more points down the stretch here. They might need more than between six and eight mm. from her in order to come back and win this game. Especially with Azema not available right now. Available, but probably not going to go in for a little while with four fouls. Clockerty. It's good. A deep three for Mary Clockerty, who has come alive over the last few for Lehigh. The Barber got out there and challenged. She's not nearly the size of Clockerty, so even the hand in the face didn't do a whole lot to disrupt that rhythm. Junior from Herndon, Virginia. You get a guard 5'6 crashing out on you and you're six foot with a confident three-point stroke. That's easy. Man is finding Megan Swords. That's her first second half bucket. She has five. A oh, quick foul on Manis all the way out towards the arc. That is bad news for Holy Cross. And Lehigh knows it. That's her fourth personal foul with 7.49 to go. And Manis oh, knows it too. Uh, it just no reason for that. Thought she, she thought she saw the ball exposed, took a swipe at it, and got an absolutely no basketball there. Just got all Mountain Hawk. I mean, for now, it takes a seat, but it's going to probably come down to Manis having to play four or five minutes at least and play well and not pick up that fifth foul for her team to come back. Right. This isn't a situation where you, you stash her indefinitely. You, you need her, and if she does pick up that fifth foul with five minutes left, four minutes left, there's no use in and trying to save her for the final two or three minutes when you're trying to cut into a deficit like this. Boer sets herself up, middle of the paint, no. And truthfully for Holy Cross, Manis has been good here today, but it's really been LaBarbera who's been the story offensively. Look at that. Couldn't complete the play despite the great crossover. Wants that ball back, and will reset. Even though it was an air ball, it happened so quickly in the possession, still plenty of time. Back door, Azema. <laughs> Coach McInerney saying with Smith and LaBarbera out there, Smith actually leads the league in assists. It's like having two point guards out on the court at once. Smith and LaBarbera both in the game right now. That was a three from Clockerty, but it wouldn't go. Even with Manis out, the lead now down to seven, Holy Cross ball. Yeah. 
amazing the way Holy Cross has responded after trailing by 24. Azema back door again. Same cut, two plays in a row. The first time LaBarbera, now the assist from Smith. And it is Swords blocking Hedstrom down low. It's out of bounds off of Lehigh. And even Lehigh's bench, you keep looking over the coaching staff. They just aren't quite sure what to do. Do we call a timeout? How do we get things controlled here? And it's a great call on that blocked shot by Megan Swords to get the correct possession. LaBarbera is open. Just short, Azema fighting. Lehigh, see if they can get back and start running again. Could be the break that Lehigh needs to get some momentum back. That will not go for Cameron Benz. Lehigh scoreless in two and a half minutes. Seventh rebound for Swords in there without Manis on the floor. Holy Cross pulling closer without their top player, Lauren Manis. Good hustle from Swords. That's a foul. Has to be uh, Maddie Smith. Third on her, all of them coming in the second half, but with under six minutes to go in regulation. Not worried about a guard having three fouls. Here's a look at the scramble. Thought there could have been a foul called on Swords. In fact, a little bit earlier in that exchange. Instead, they let it roll on a little bit and get Smith there. Got a whole bunch of substitutions coming in. Fast and furious for Holy Cross. Addison Cross is in. Catherine Petey, Janae Faulkner with Swords and LaBarbera staying out on the court. It is interesting, though, the way that the Crusaders have kept competitive and been more than competitive, actually made some headway without Manis, takes some pressure off of Coach McInerney as far as when to bring Manis back in. But that'll complicate matters. Cameron Benz now at 16 points. She knocks down a three. It's such a steep mountain to climb when you're down 24 points that you make so much progress and then suddenly they make one three out of nowhere and it feels like you, you just got a punch in the gut. Lehigh needs a little bit more of that offensively. Any Lehigh bucket kind of feels like a dagger. Avery LaBarbera able to carve out some space and the 82% free throw shooter best on the team goes to the charity strike. First two free throws of the night coming up for LaBarbera. It's about the only thing she has not done as that foul goes against Megan Walker. I talked about how it's like having two point guards out there at once, her and Smith. And they have a great relationship too. LaBarbera, a sophomore, Smith, a senior. There's a rare free throw miss there for Avery. But LaBarbera was saying coming into the season that last year when she was a freshman, Maddie Smith really helped her out, helped take her under her wing and teach LaBarbera about how you have success at this level. Still seems remarkable. This is a seven point game. Headstrom to Benz, feeling it. Just rims out. Great box out. And they're going to get Lehigh. Who's that going on? And they're giving it to Catherine Petey. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I, I thought that was a pure and simple box out from Petey. They say the foul goes on her. That's going to take us to a timeout. Holy Cross on the comeback trail. LaBarbera, back door to Azema. It's like having two point guards. There's Smith, same look, back door to Azema. But a dagger three from Cameron Benz creates some more separation for Lehigh. Welcome back, 61 to 54. Lehigh on top of Holy Cross with Adam Giardino, AJ Cannell. With 4.58 left to go in the game. Here's what we had coming into the timeout. What do you see? Well, Catherine Petey's trying to box out a player bigger than her. And I, I think looking at the replay, I understand it slightly more. They felt like there was already some position there that there was some entitlement to that space from Hottinger. Uh, end of the day, Megan Walker grabs that rebound offensively and probably goes up for an easy two. End of the day, it's stolen away by Smith anyway. Faulkner in the corner for three, just off the mark. So with the empty possession for Lehigh, the foul called on Petey probably works out 
to the advantage of right. Holy Cross anyway. Uh, makes sense. Although, that is the fourth team foul in the quarter. That was their final one to give. Shot clock down to six. Seemed like a lot of steps there. Shot wouldn't go. Hottiger gets it back, throws it off the bottom of the rim, still diving, looking to call timeout, and they are awarded timeout. Possession felt like it had nine lives, at least three or four for Lehigh. The ball kept on finding Franny Hottinger. And so it remains a seven-point game. Lehigh 61, Holy Cross 54. Certainly covered the fact that Lehigh was up by 24. Holy Cross able to come most of the way back, getting within five. And now with 4.12 left to go, what's the recipe for the Crusaders the rest of the way? They're still going to need some three-pointers knocked down, and maybe it's not going to be Avery LaBarbera who does it. She did so much work individually in that sec in that third quarter part of the comeback that now here we are in the fourth it's going to require a little bit more work but at the end of the day if you're lehigh as much as you feel like the game has been slipping away you've got a seven point lead with four minutes to go and uh, in under normal circumstances i think you'd sign up for that if you're lehigh coming in here they you said hey we'll give you a seven point lead with four minutes left you okay with that mountain hawks would have said absolutely so despite what this might feel like right now Things are in a little bit of a better spot for Lehigh than it, it might feel here at the Hart Center. Teams both are so talented, both top 115 RPI, both beat a power conference team during non-conference play. Grothouse, the whirling move, no, Manis flies in, gets decked. No call, just out of bounds to Holy Cross, which at the end of the day, I guess you take it if you're the Crusaders, they bring Azema back in for Swords. So two different players now with four personals are in the game, Manis and Azema. Here's a look. She certainly reacted like she got hit up high. A lot happened there really quickly with those hands flying in from Walker. Manis in traffic, count it, and the foul! They've been making Manis take difficult looks all evening. You can add that one to the list, but Manis still made it and won. That is the exact kind of shot that you've seen for three and a half, almost four full years from Lauren Manis. She's doing that from when she was a freshman until now, and she can convert on the three-point play as well. One point shy of being tied for fifth now in Patriot League history in career points. Hasn't been a four-point game since early on in the second quarter. Holy Cross, last led. A little over two minutes into the second. That's blocked by Faulkner, two seconds on the timer as it stays with the Mountain Hawks. You're Lehigh, you've got to draw up something good here. Empty possessions are one thing, but empty possessions without even getting clean looks, that's something entirely different. Holy Cross, student section. Yeah. Starting to get into it a little bit. Lobbing it up for Benz, gets the shot off. No, LaBarbera falls down. It'll go to Lehigh. Lehigh oh, excuse me, to Holy Cross. Yeah. It almost felt like there, Adam, that Carmen Portavi all kind of split the difference. Yes. Didn't call the foul, just pointed the arrow. Correct. giving it back to Holy Cross. With under two minutes left, you'd probably review that and say, no, that's Lehigh ball, but you didn't want to call the foul, but there wasn't enough there, but certainly LaBarbera didn't just happen to lose that ball out of bounds on her own. Manis to LaBarbera to make it a one-point game. Azema, what a play. Great hustle for Aluchi Azema. Feel the energy surrounding this Holy Cross team in their bench right now. LaBarbera fakes, drives in, tough pass. It's picked up. Cameron Benz wisely turns around and wants to use some clock. It's hard if you're Lehigh. You're so used to being in top gear at all times that in a game like this where you've got a small lead, you need to milk clock 20 seconds down. You're not always used to working that 10-second offense. Using a lot of time here, Headstrom 
For the drop down extra pass back to Boer. No. Faulkner last to touch it, but then two players go and try and save it, and it's Holy Cross ball. That was headed out off of the Crusaders until that last lunge, and someone from Lehigh got it. Allegedly. Mm. Out of bounds off of Boer. Maybe LaBarbera in reality, but even if they had replay as an option there, it's still slightly over two minutes. That would have been tough to overturn, very close. And my vote goes, that's Lehigh basketball there. But not an option to make the review at this stage. Well, now it is, but not on that call. Meanwhile, four-point game. Manis, good feed. Smith, one-point game. Second big three for Maddie Smith. She hit one late in the third quarter. Timeout, Lehigh, Sue Troyan presses pause with 1.34 remaining. Boy, Madeline Smith has been clutch here today. She made just one free throw earlier, but two big time threes. And how about Lauren Manis' ability to kick that out and hit it right in the pocket of Madeline Smith. This is right in an area where she can catch and shoot in rhythm. Never a hesitation on what Smith wanted to do there. Just perfectly executed from the big post player, the perhaps Patriot League player of the year, one of the leading candidates. Not a bucket, not a rebound, but a big time assist from Lauren Manis. It's when Ann McInerney talks about how they like to play inside out with Manis. Perhaps her most special attribute is her ability to draw that attention, create looks. That's why this team has been number one in the country in shooting from beyond the arc for much of the year for their recent slump. Lead is down to one. Posting up Boer. Nearly got it to go. Boer, the top player on this Lehigh team, all Patriot League first team last year. She is an 1,000 point scorer as well, nearly 700 rebounds on her career. That was so close to falling on how, the foul on fall. How did that not go in? for Boer, who's one of the, the better free throw shooters, right around 70% for a team that shoots around the mid 60s. Not the strength for Lehigh, and there are three of six at the line today. Boer just went over 700 career rebounds with, with eight boards today. She's got 12, eight, and four assists, but a key miss. And if you're just joining us, you see this is a one point game. It was a 49-25 lead halfway into the third quarter for Lehigh before a huge run for Holy Cross. Over halfway into the third quarter. And Holy Cross erased most of that in the remaining time in the third quarter. Chip back further in the fourth. There is an option they can go look at this if they feel like it. Don't know that they're going to. Yeah, AJ, this is a 35-13 run right now for Holy Cross. Normally you don't call a run something that's gone over 10 minutes, but it really has felt like one extended run. Yeah, so th there was some discussion there about yeah. maybe making a review, but Kevin Rulin, who made the call, says, no, I'm sure about it. And the Lehigh bench is saying two minutes, use the monitor. I, I don't disagree. If the option's available, why they wouldn't be doing that? Now, hold on, that foul is just the fourth. That was a foul to give with a buck 17 left in a two-point game. I agree, ah. you know, why not if you're not 100% sure, but I think Kevin Rulin's saying he was 100% sure because he was right there along the sideline for that call. The other side of the argument is you want to move the game along and not have to needlessly pause it and review everything over and over again if you do feel like you are confident in the call on the court. I think they're going to check and see whether a second came off. The shot clock is fine at 20. But the clock, the game clock may have gone from 118 to 117. And we're this gonna is see that here. You can't, if you don't feel like the clock is necessarily correct, you can't avoid reviewing that. You well, have to review that. Yeah, you see the clock at 117, and the, I mean, the, the kick was instantaneous. Right. So the clock never should have started or stopped. It was at. I mean, is there a minimum technically of, I guess, you know, 0.3 or whatever that have to go off if the ball is put in play? 
might not reflect itself when there's when we're not seeing the tenths of a second on the clock yet. And yeah, they're not going to change it. All right, so two-point game. Holy Cross has come nearly all the way back from down 24. La Barbara Manis, she's right there. This is a tie game with one minute to go. And on that bucket, Lauren Manis, top five all time in Patriot League history in points, passing Courtney Davidson for Navy. Boer draws two. There's some contact there. The kick out to Benz. Just short. And there's a foul on Lehigh. Holy Cross goes to the free throw line with a chance for the lead with 35.3. On this replay, look at Azema. She's got to back off defensively. Manis walks away with her hands pulled back. Both of those players on the court with four fouls. It results in a really clean look for Lehigh. They miss the three, and then the modest bump is what gives this opportunity for Lauren Manis and the Crusaders. There are some fouls, some whistles you could argue earlier that did not go the Crusaders' way. See things even out there. Manis takes the lead with the first, misses the second. That was the third personal, by the way, on Grothaus. And now Lehigh immediately calls timeout with a 63-62 Holy Cross lead. And that free throw for Lauren Manis gives Holy Cross its first lead since early on in the second quarter. It's been a long time coming for Holy Cross en route to this comeback effort. It's just been a lot of Lauren Manis. We talked about how Avery LaBarbera had a huge hand in that third quarter run, and that maybe she didn't have enough left in the tank, that someone else would have to step up and playing almost the entire fourth quarter with four fouls. Lauren Manis has found her way, found a way to get her team back while also keeping herself in the game. Leaves the door open a little further for Lehigh by only going one of two from the line. Now, what do you do if you're Lehigh? Where do you go? Just even mentally, where do you, what place do you go to after being up by 24? That is deflected into the arms of Hedstrom. Fortunate for the Mountain Hawks, they have this chance. Benz lost it. There's a whistle, and she'll go to the free throw line. It's on the Barbara for reaching in. Just a little bit of the wrist wasn't totally clean. Hedstrom did just enough, or rather, it was Benz who did just enough to keep that ball on a yo-yo away from La Barbara as she went for the strip. Cameron Benz is 60% at the line. Manis was 76% coming into the game, by the way. No. Lehigh just four of nine from the free throw line. Holy Cross is eight of 14. So whichever team ends up losing the game is gonna regret some of those misses. Now, Benz, the senior from Montgomery, New Jersey, AAU teammates with Natty Smith, goes 0 for 2. But it's off of Megan Swords. That's a huge development as well, though. So Lehigh can't convert at the line. One of their trusted veterans, Benz, goes 0 for, but Holy Cross loses it out of bounds, or did they, based on that? I think and that I, might be worth a review. And now Ann McInerney is saying, why are you not reviewing this? Which they won't. Interesting. Headstrom, tough with the hook shot. No, Azema the rebound. And she is fouled. So it does not end up mattering. For the second time, Adam, they don't go take that review. The result ends up working out for Holy Cross anyway. But all things considered, here's the miss on the running hook shot, doesn't go. But Aluchi Azema, for all that she can do on the court, she's been so strong, 10 rebounds, looking for a couple of free throws to get herself to 10 points. She's 13 of 30 at the free throw line this season, 43%. Free throws kind of keeping both teams in the game right now. Both teams giving each other opportunities to capitalize. 
Well, they were looking for a big game out of Azema after a season low six minutes last time out. They've gotten it. I think they're happy to get one for two from her. And it's a two point lead with 17 seconds for Lehigh to work with. Boer gets inside. No, ball is loose. Azema's there with a hustle play, and there's a foul. It's going to send Faulkner back to the line. Should go against Clockerty. And who is there first to the loose ball after Boer couldn't make it? None other than Aluchi Azema again. Keeping it alive, and then even as it comes loose, just doing enough, doing just enough to punch it to a teammate. Player that was a big time recruit, back to back Gatorade State Player of the Year in Rhode Island. One more to ice it for Holy Cross, otherwise, Lehigh's got a chance. Faulkner 68%, misses it, immediate timeout, as you would expect from Cameron Ben. So, you know, to finish on. Azem, I know it's, I think there's been some ups and downs for her, and this must be, feel so gratifying to have this type of impact and potentially a huge win. But now for Lehigh, they're given another opportunity, still down by a single possession with Holy Cross, yet again unable to ice it at the free throw line. They're going to come over and check the time it went on the from, replay monitor. It went from 4 to 3.1, and in my head, it needs to be more than that. It, it can be as high as 3.7, but I think they'll definitely add a couple of ticks here because no sooner did that rebound get grabbed by Cameron Benz was she immediately calling a timeout. I don't even know if she landed before she had called the timeout. As well as Holy Cross, though, has done during this comeback, Adam. They have not been able to clinch it at the foul line. They're now 10 of 18 in Lehigh. We know they're going to be looking for a three. Question is, if you're Holy Cross, can you foul? without risking fouling a shooter. If you get a catch with somebody's back facing the basket near half court, something away, anything other than that, I don't think you touch it. I think you just contest the shot because you're right, that is in an ideal world. But if you choose to foul at the wrong time and the player catching can in one motion just get a quick heave going, even if it's not a pretty shot, just get a shot off at the rim, then all of a sudden you've, you've made a critical error. For sure. So they go ahead, they've completed their review. They're gonna leave the time on the clock, or they're gonna add up to 3.7, okay. No, it's, it is 3.1, yeah, they had said well, they were gonna. With the timeout, it's about when the call is recognized, more so than when the player's calling. Mm -hmm. That's the little wrinkle there. 3.1, Lehigh down by three. Clockerty for the tie. No, and Holy Cross climbs the mountain from 24 points down with a huge mid-February win inside the Hart Center, defeating Lehigh 65 to 62. And AJ, not just down 24, but you're down 24 with just over 14 minutes to go. And that is a huge comeback with not a whole lot of time remaining for Holy Cross. Just a tremendous effort for the Crusaders, and you better believe they are all fired up. This Crusaders team has been looking for confidence. That's the word that Ann McInerney, their head coach, stressed coming into this game. They've lost their last two, picked second in the preseason, only six and five in league play coming in. How could they get back on track? They needed to build confidence. And down by 24, I would say Avery LaBarbera helped build some confidence for this group, for the entire team, as they came all the way back from down 24 and beat Lehigh by three, 65 to 62. For Adam Giardino, our entire crew here at the College of the Holy Cross, I'm AJ Cannell saying so long from the Hart Center in Worcester. This was a real treat. Holy Cross comes all the way back and takes down Lehigh 65 to 62.